Welcome back. This is a little video to try and help somebody that may have a shop van that quit working. I got this one off Marketplace for about 40 bucks. It's not working properly, and there's only three things on them. You have the motor, the toggle switch, and the capacitor, and capacitors fail over time. And we can always bypass the toggle switch to see if it's the switch. So I was just gonna show you how to, a few test methods to see what's going on and show you how to change out the capacitor on it. All right, so like I said, there's only a few things on this. So here's your power wire to our toggle switch. Here's our motor and here's our capacitor right here. So we're gonna take the back off of this and then go ahead and test the capacitor and see if that's our culprit. And also I'll look, take a look at this switch as well because we can maybe put like a spade connector on it to bypass it or wire nut it. And then you plug it in. And if your uh, fan starts to work, then it was just your switch. And if it's neither of those two, then your motor failed, and they're kind of universal. You just would want to look on the side of the motor, which I'll show you, which will show you the horsepower and the RPM on it. All right, so for my fan, I just have a bunch of 5 16 screws around it, so let's just get all these off. All right, and I have one screw behind the wheel that I can't get off, so it's all right, though. So right here is the capacitor. This one's rated for 12.5 microfarads. So we'll be able to test it. Here's our two wires. It looks like it just has one of the crimp wire nuts. So we're just gonna cut this off. We'll test it with the meter or you can just replace it. If your switch happens to be bad, it's just a toggle switch. Mine has a low and high. This is your high voltage power in from the plug right here. This is your neutral and this is your low and high setting. So all you would do is unplug it, unplug the high, and maybe get a either wire nutted or just get a different spade terminal and plug it in, and then plug the fan in and see if it works. If it does, you just have a bad switch, which they're only a few bucks. So we'll go ahead and test the capacitor now. took the screw out to unmount it just easier to show you I'll just go ahead and cut this one off let's take it to the bench and test it all right so we're at the bench if you have a meter that can read it it says either MFD or UF your one lead is gonna go on one of the wires and the other one will go here we're looking for 12.5 and we're at 8.8 .8 NF and it's supposed to be 12.5 UF, so this means this capacitor is bad. I bought a universal turbo mini, so it has a 7.5 option, a 5 option, and a 2.5. So we need 12.5, so we're gonna have to use a little jumper cable from 7.5 to 5, which comes in the box. All right, we'll test this new capacitor. Should be right at the 12.5, so it doesn't matter which one you check on. So one will go here, the other one will go on the center. You hold it there for a second, and then we'll look at the meter. As it reads, 12.8 UF. So we know this capacitor will be good. So all we're going to do is install two little spade terminals on the wires we cut, and then we'll find a way to strap this up with maybe just some plastic strap or metal strapping and we'll test everything out. Strip the wire in the back and we'll go ahead and put these spade terminals on to plug into the capacitor. When you do plug it in, it doesn't, it doesn't matter where the wires go as long as one goes to the common side and one goes to the capacitance side in my case where I have the 7.5 and the five jumped. What you can just buy a standard capacitor. It only has two terminals and it's the exact number you need. If you just need a little bit more wiring, there's no harm in just using a wire nut in this case, or just like sending these wires out with a butt connector or soldering them so you can strap it maybe to the back or throw a strap over the motor, whatever's easiest. All right, since I didn't really leave myself much extra wiring, I just put a zip tie through one of the parts of the motor. We'll just strap this right to the side. It's not like this 
thing goes anywhere. It just sits on the ground and spins. And if you're concerned, you can put a little electrical tape around it, but that should just hold it in place fine. All right, so if you need to test if your switch is bad, if you can either just wire out the wires and turn it on and see if it works, or if you have a meter, you can go ahead and set it to continuity. When you touch the leads together, it makes a complete loop and they'll tone out. So just set your meter wherever. And then we know the center one is the power from, and then one side is for low speed for mine. And then we have high speed. So we'll just go ahead and turn the switch on. We hear it beeping. If I turn it the other way, it doesn't do anything. But if I then switch to this side, so I know my switch is good. So let's hook everything back up and see if mine's working now. And if this doesn't work, that just means my, I have a bad blower motor. All right, and right before I close everything up, if you just look on one of the sides of the motor, if you look on the bottom left, it says 1730, 1450 RPM. So that's our speeds. And then it even says right there, cap 12.5, and then output horsepower one and a half. So that's what you'll be looking for. You can also amp it if you want. So this one's ready for 6.2 amps. Um, so if it's running over that, that just means the motor's going bad. Or the capacitor is really weak and then it even has a little teeny schematic right there it tells you which wires do what so let's put it together now and then test everything out all right so i got all my screws back on capacitor strapped up we know my switch is good let's plug it in see what we got all right now with it running i went ahead and put my amp meter on it just so we can see since we figured out that mine was rated for around 6.2 this is on high speed you can see it's running Right at its max, so 6.2. If we turn it off, see it'll drop back down to zero. And then we'll turn it to low speed. We'll see it stabilize out. This will drop right down to 5.3. So the capacitor probably put a little bit of strain on the motor, but it's still within range. So this fan for 40 bucks still has a little bit of life in it, and then the capacitor was only about 20, 30 bucks. They have even cheaper ones. But, hope this helps.